Hey everybody, this is the Spotlight Lecture on Sensation and Perception. I'm Jeff McDonald, and today we're going to look at some basic ideas of the chapter and uh, spotlight one particular area. First of all, some basic concepts in the chapter, this uh, difference between sensation and perception. Um, sensation is really that stimuli that you get through your senses. Perception is really what you do with it. Um, we might all get simil similar stimuli and see the same things, hear the same things, taste the same things, but then what we do with it, how we organize it, is based really on our own experience and our own expectations and can be very different from person to person. How much stimuli that you sense can vary based on the person, based on uh, alertness, physical limitations, but there is a minimum amount that is required before uh, we as human beings can actually detect it. And what they call that is the absolute threshold. That's the minimum needed to detect a specific stimulus 50% of the time. And you'd probably be pretty surprised at how little it is. Um, human beings can see a candle flame 30 miles away. They can uh, hear a watch ticking 20 feet away. Average human can smell a drop of perfume in a six-room house, and they can taste a teaspoon of sugar in a gallon of water. Uh, believe it or not, uh, the absolute minimum stimulation uh, for touch would be the wing of a fly dropped a centimeter onto your cheek. You know, pretty amazing that it's so small that the average person can detect that 50% of the time. Well, what about stimuli that does not reach that? That would be subliminal. It's just below the absolute awareness level. And consciously, we don't perceive us actually sensing that, but we're actually receiving those message. And they call it subliminal. Uh, and you'd be surprised, too, at how many advertisers try to use messages, movies use messages that we consciously don't realize that we're seeing or hearing, but our uh, our brains are actually picking up that information, our senses are picking up that information, and it does make a subliminal impact on us below the level of consciousness. Priming is when we uh, respond to objects or events in a certain way based on some association we make in our mind. And I'm going to kind of uh, do a little trick with you about that. I'm going to have you um, add some numbers together for me, and just keep doing it and just answer the question as I go. Okay, so in your brain, just add 7 and 7, 12 and 2, 9 and 5, 5 and 9, 1 and 13, 2 and 12, 4 and 10, 10 and 4, 7 and 7, 6 and 8, 8 and 6, 12 and 2. Name a vegetable. Now hopefully you came up with one very quickly. All the answers to all the uh, math problems I gave you were 14. Did you think of carrot? See there is that kind of priming that 14 carrot. When people think of 14 they go to carrot. And that's priming. It could be when I say, ask you a question like, um, what is that fabric that we get uh, from caterpillars and cocoons? And you would say silk. And then I say, what does a cow drink? And some people right off the bat say milk, but really cows drink water. They give milk. I've primed you with the word silk to then See cow, think of milk because it rhymes. That's priming. Perceptual set, dealing with perception. These are the tendencies and assumptions that we have, and it affects what we hear, taste, feel, and see. Uh, it could be through our experience. It could be through our attitudes. And it's really those schemas that we have in our head of what we expect to see, what we expect to taste, what we expect to hear that then really influence our perception of any kind of stimuli. I'm going to show you another example of this. I'm going to show you a quick picture. And what I want you to do is to, I'm going to show it to you for about five seconds. And then I want you just to write it down. OK? OK. 
Okay, now I want you to write down what you saw, draw the geometric shape, and then the, the sentence that you saw inside the geometric shape, I want you to write that down. Now I want you to look again at the figure I showed you and see how close you came. For some people, they get it, they get it right, but most people will get it wrong because they don't notice the second in. They don't see that because your brain, your perceptual set, says, see the flowers in the park. It doesn't recognize a sentence like, see the flowers in, in the park, because that's not the way people talk. And your perceptual set influences that perception of that stimuli coming in. And that's just a little piece of the chapter. It's a great chapter on sensation and perception. This was the spotlight lecture on one small part of it. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.